Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Taito Ecology. I've decided to load up our rainforest biome yet again, now that the hotfix has been released, that makes it so the herbivores no longer munch away at all of our mushrooms, so already you can see that this place is in much better shape than the way that we left it last time. <laughs> already, all of our mushrooms seem to be, uh, healthy. Well, most of them anyway. We have a couple of them over here and it looks like, okay, there's those clusters of mushrooms that I remember seeing before. So our mushrooms are doing just fine at the moment. We may need to add in a couple more back over here. And it looks like our goatees are doing pretty good too. I was a little bit worried about them just because they seem to be re reproducing so quickly at the moment, but it seems like they had certainly didn't go out of control. Though uh, this group over here, oh my goodness, look how many there are. Oh my goodness, wait a second, 38 juveniles. Oh my goodness, okay, as soon as I say that, then we end up seeing that there's 38 juveniles in that group and there's 24 in here. Oh my goodness, guys, we definitely need to get some more predators in here very, very quickly before we end up uh, regretting it. <laughs> it looks like the agotes over here were already picked off by uh, probably these ocelots, probably these guys right here, I would imagine. Um, they are the ones who are eating all of our agotes because they are our only predators at the moment. We have this group of ocelots over here. And we also have, of course, our Ocelot Island Ocelots, which are living right over here. Um, right where the Agotes like to snack, actually, which is quite interesting. <laughs> and all these mushrooms, oh my goodness. I don't see any uh, territories for the mushrooms, but it seems like they are certainly alive and well over here. Because we have tons, tons and tons of mushrooms. They're just uh, not showing up for some reason. So I guess we don't really need to worry about the mushrooms over here after all. Look at them all. Oh my goodness. There's almost as many mushrooms in this biome as there are ferns. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. So we certainly don't need to worry about those after all. But I think maybe what we should do is possibly open up another territory over here, another zone actually. So we could maybe make a larger area for some more big cats to roam. Because again, I'm a little bit concerned about stuffing this area with a lot of cats. We know that they love to eat. So it's a little bit concerning. But before we add in any more of these herbivores, I just really feel like we should add in something to control that massive population of uh, a goatee over there. So I think what I'm going to do is open up this tab right here and unlock zone four. We'll confirm that and we'll uh, take a look at this place too. I believe this is basically like where the uh, water ends. <laughs> the water just can't make it through this little mound of dirt here. So this is basically where uh, the water ends on both both uh, different ends of the stream that we have here. So this place, what are we going to do with this place? We should probably spruce it up here first. We should make sure that there's plenty of grass for whatever we decide to place in here. And oh my goodness, our notifications too. Um, yeah, our mushrooms definitely had a tiny bit of trouble, but it's kind of hard to tell because there's so many littered around um, zone one there. So let's see, we'll add in, um, did we unlock all of the plants? No, we didn't add the uh, kapok tree into the biome yet. So let's unlock that. That, we might as well, right? We might as well uh, unlock all of our plants. Oh my goodness, this is a huge tree too. Look at this thing, this is so cool. Oh my gosh, this might be my favorite tree so far, but unfortunately it looks like there's no uh, <laughs> no fruits or leaves and we got the plenty of plants achievement as well. So we'll take those rewards certainly. And, um, oh my gosh, I really love this thing. It has those twisty roots and everything. I don't think it's really going to help our biome very much <laughs> if the animals can't eat from it, but it is really cool. Oh my gosh, I wonder if there's anywhere where I can kind of like stuff this tree in over here. I have a feeling not because it's really big and there's so many ferns over here. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> so it really doesn't seem like uh, we can place it over in zone one at least. How about zone two? There's a couple uh, empty spots over here. Oh my gosh, but it's just so big. It's so big, guys. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to... Uh, we're going to abandon that idea and just leave our kapok tree over here in zone four. It's kind of nice. It's like a big landmark, I guess. We'll have this huge tree in zone four for all of our animals to uh, scamper around underneath. And we should probably place a couple of ferns by uh, its base too, because I think that would look very, very nice. And that would give them uh, a chance to spread around while we're gone over here too. So we'll place a couple of ferns right by the base just to get them started. There we go. 
and uh, maybe a couple Amazon flame trees because I love these too. They're so tiny and cute <laughs> compared to this huge tree. These guys are so tiny, but they're adorable and they seem to spread pretty quickly from what I remember because yeah, these guys over here, we have tiny, even smaller baby Amazon flame trees. So those definitely spread very, very quickly. And um, our orchids too, because I love these. I love the orchids. There we go, a nice little field of orchids for um, all of the animals that we're going to place on the side. There we go, that should be good. And of course, our decomposers too. Let's speed up the time because I know we're going to add a ton of decomposers into the area, so we're definitely going to need our impact points uh, replenishing at a very fast rate. <laughs> we'll add a whole bunch of mushrooms because the Agotis love their mushrooms. And I think we'll add some earthworms to the base of this tree too because it would help those roots those big, giant, curly roots. <laughs> it'll keep this tree very, very healthy. Even if it's not really going to help our biome, it'll keep uh, the tree healthy so it won't uh, be dying off anytime soon. And of course, our millipedes. We always have to add the millipedes in as well because they are, um, I believe they're actually unique to this biome. I don't think we've seen the millipedes anywhere else. I'm not sure if we would be able to find them in the uh, desert because we haven't loaded that one up yet. That's actually the only biome that we haven't seen yet. So that's something that we're going to have to uh, check out eventually. Once we unlock everything in this biome too, maybe we'll start up the, uh, the desert biome. I'm, I can't remember what it is exactly. There's like, this is the Amazon rainforest technically, but it's some sort of desert. So I'm sure it'll be very, very interesting. Very different from all of the other places that we've been to with all of this nice water and grass. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be seeing much of that in the desert. So let's see, what can we place over here? Oh, oh my goodness, our tortoise. Let's unlock that tortoise. I definitely wanna unlock this guy though. Oh my goodness, um, he's an herbivore, right? Okay, let's take a look at him. Let's see what he likes to eat because we don't want him to go hungry as soon as we place him in here. The yellowfoot tortoise are herbivores, though they do scavenge from time to time. Roots, leaves, berries, and slow-moving insects are all part of the tortoise's diet. Okay, so I think he'll be just fine. I think uh, we should be able to place this guy right in. Of course, we're going to place him right next to the water because I'm sure that he will enjoy the fact that uh, he's next to a nice big body of water. Oh my goodness, six tortoises should be showing up in this territory. Look at these guys. <laughs> the little spots on their legs are so cute. Oh my goodness. Move along, little guys. Move along. They are all on the march. It might take them a little while to get to their food, though, so maybe we should think about uh, adding in some places for them to eat. I'm not sure if ants are going to be enough for them. They need slow-moving insects because, of course, they are quite slow. Did that just happen? Did that really just happen again? <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. I am so glad that I just placed one group of tortoises in the area because that was not a good sign at all. Why does this always happen? <laughs> Why are these creatures so very hungry? Um, we'll place three groups of ants in the area so that hopefully they will be kept under control. <laughs> that was crazy. I can't believe that. And um, we also need our moths or our butterflies. So where would they be? Where on earth are our moths and butterflies? Right at the beginning. Okay, there we go. So let's add some blue morpho butterflies into the area too so that they can pollinate all of these plants that we just added in and make sure that they are all happy and healthy and able to spread while they're gone. Well, we're gone actually, not while they're gone. And uh, <laughs> we'll place another last group right over here, actually quite close to the other butterflies too. So this place is definitely going to be pollinated. That is for sure. And there's our title coins for the month. Months pass so quickly in this game now. It is crazy. It really is. I'm a little bit worried that the Agotis may have uh, reproduced again, actually, in the meantime. So we might want to uh, pick up the pace a little bit and add in one of these big cats. Because I think that's what we're going to do next. I think. I may regret saying this, but I think that is the plan. So let's see. Let's see how we're going to uh, play this here. We have the cougar, of course. But I am really tempted to unlock this jaguar because it looks gorgeous. <laughs> I am really tempted, guys. But I have a feeling this is going to be like a, uh, a do-over of the snow leopard issue in the Himalayas. So, oh boy. Let's see how this goes, guys. Let's see. We might as well experiment here. So let's see how big their territory is first. I have a feeling it's going to be huge. Okay, yes. <laughs> huge indeed. So let's place it over here so they can basically take like everything in the biome. Um, which again, may be a bit of an issue, but 
That way they can reach all of those tiny little Lagoti over there as well, which is kind of the uh, main concern of this moment. <laughs> and oh my gosh, these guys, they are so gorgeous though. Look at them. Oh man, they definitely remind me of the snow leopards. Definitely, definitely. Just some um, easier to blend in with the rainforest here because they have those darker coats. Of course, the snow leopards blend in very well with the snow in the Himalayas, which we have definitely learned. Um, are these agotis? Oh my goodness. The Akotis are alive over here. They're alive and well. Okay, so yet again, an issue with uh, invisible territories here. Just like our bison in the grasslands, actually. I still can't find that bison's territory. So these uh, Agotis are also having a bit of a uh, invisible territory issue. I guess that's okay. <laughs> I'm just glad that we found it. So it's a good thing that we place these guys over here, actually, because they can help this uh, issue right here. They can kind of take control of all of those Agotis. I love how they're scattering too they're like oh my goodness oh my goodness a big cat just dropped in right next to us we are getting out of here and where did that other guy go actually now that i think about it where is the other jaguar <laughs> um our ocelot is up here oh my goodness i don't know if you want to be up here little guy now that we've added those jaguars and i have a feeling uh that is not going to be a very good mix you are a very tiny kitty compared to those jaguars so they might take you down too um, it looks like this guy might be going after something though. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> he just wanted to run toward the orchids. Okay. Oh my gosh, and a little baby Agoti sleeping right under the orchid. Oh my goodness, how adorable is that? <laughs> oh, <gasps> no, no, that was so rude. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so rude. Our ocelot, are you kidding me? Oh my goodness, I am regretting putting you in here now. That was terrible. That was absolutely terrible. Oh my gosh, well at least we know where the other jaguar is now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like a real nature show here, guys, I swear. Okay, so how about our other agotis? Now that we have known, now that we have um, noticed that the agoti areas are actually invisible, I'm a little bit worried about how this biome is actually uh, handling itself at the moment. It seems like there's a lot of agotis over here too, and I know their, er their uh, territories are kind of small, so I'm assuming that this is probably a group of its own. I know I placed quite a few of these in here, which may have been a mistake. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this one can't reach over there. Um, this one can't reach over there. So yeah, it really seems like there may be another group of goatees right here that we just can't see. So this is a little bit worrying. I thought we were in better shape than we actually are because it turns out that there are a ton of agotis running around here right now. And I really don't want them to become the next deer mice. <laughs> that is like the worst possible uh, thing that could happen here. So let's see, um, oh, our ocelots have low population now. That is like the worst. <laughs> I hope our jaguars aren't just going to completely demolish our ocelots. So I am definitely going to wait on adding any more herbivores in here because I know that there are a ton of agotis and really, I would just rather that our big cats and our small cats too would work away at chipping those um, agotis down in their populations. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, see their territories in a future update because I do want to know exactly how many little tiny agotis are running around in each of these areas. That would definitely help. <laughs> that would definitely help. But maybe we should think about um, adding in just a couple more things for these tortoises. I'm not sure if the big cats are going to come over here and demolish them, but just in case they don't, I would like them to have enough food to uh, survive. <laughs> so they like to eat a uh, pretty like a lot of things I guess they like to eat slow moving insects they like to eat roots I believe it said they like to eat leaves so I think basically anything would be okay for our um, little yellow foot tortoises which are so adorable and uh, there we go that's enough ferns for here because we know that they like to spread very very quickly we'll add a couple zebra plants over here and hopefully those will spread around too. Oh, and the heliconia, I love this thing. This looks like something that is definitely meant for a rainforest. So of course we have to add that in over here as well. And uh, there we go, I think that's good. Maybe a couple more trees though. The papayas might be a nice place over here. I think it said they like to eat uh, some berries every now and then. And I know the papaya is not a berry, but it is a type of fruit. So maybe they would appreciate that. <laughs> maybe. Um, let's see, we could also add this palm tree back here, which would be nice. And um, that strangler fig too, which might look very good next to our kapok tree actually. 
There we go. There we go. Those uh, twisty roots and that bark and stuff. That looks uh, actually really nice. It looks like it's meant to be together, I think. <laughs> so there we go. There we go. Little like sentinels next to our big K-pop tree. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Again, I don't think the K-pop tree is really going to help us very much in this biome, but that's okay. That's okay. At least it looks really nice. So let's see where those jaguars went because now that I have seen them actually take down our Asla, I am getting a little bit worried. Hopefully they're moving toward uh, this side of the biome to take care of <laughs> our goatees. Well, at least we know it's working. At least we know they're definitely taking care of the um, a goatee situation over here. So they are certainly on the move. They are on the march, getting ready to uh, wipe out all of the goatees in the area. And I am not too worried about that because I definitely don't want the agotis to go out of control. <laughs> so it would be okay if they decide to uh, destroy a couple of those territories. Unfortunately, I just placed way too many of them in the last time we were here. I guess because uh, so many of them died off due to the little uh, mushroom glitch that I wanted to make sure that they all survived. And they certainly survived, but a little bit too well, I think. At least this guy's still alive. <laughs> At least this guy is still alive and well, moving and grooving through the rainforest. There you go, through all of our goatees, kind of stalking around, picking off uh, which ones he would like, checking and seeing uh, which ones would be good to hunt, actually. It looks like he's getting a little bit hungry, so hopefully he goes after one pretty soon. That would be good. I wonder if we should place another group of ocelots in here, though. I'm starting to think that we might want to, especially if the jaguars get rid of that group, then we'll only be down to one. And I'm not sure if that's enough predators in the area to take care of all of those agouti, so I think I am going to place yet another group of ocelots over here. Like, I did say this was going to be the cat rainforest, right? Because we have so many cats that we can place in here, so I think this will be okay. I think it'll be all right if we add another group of ocelots into the mix because they are very tiny, so it's not like they can take care of uh, too many of the larger creatures anyway. And if we do decide to add in some more larger herbivores into the area in one of our future episodes, then we won't have to worry. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad now. This guy's all alone. Oh my goodness. I hope he's far away from these jaguars because I'm worried that they're kind of hunting them down right now to like take this area over as their own territory. I guess that's what they're kind of doing right now. They're kind of fighting over all of the uh, food in the area, which makes sense. There's a lot of food here though. You could, uh, you could let the ocelots live, you know? <laughs> it's not like you're going to run out anytime soon. In the grasslands, we actually saw that all of the predators kind of worked together, like the wolves and the cougars and the coyotes were all, all banding together in um, those big hordes of deer mice. But I guess that's because there were just so many that they didn't really fe feel the uh, need to go after each other. So <laughs> it was a little bit different and hopefully we're not going to get to uh, that sort of situation in this biome because that is not what I want to see. But I guess we're just going to have to find out next time we're here. So thank you guys so much for watching today and I will see you all next time. Bye!